Japan's Prime Minister has addressed the nation as fears intensify about a possible nuclear meltdown at a power plant struck by last Friday's catastrophic earthquake and tsunami. The company running the Fukushima nuclear power plant has admitted meltdown is a possibility following two fresh explosions at the complex. And there are also fears of radioactive leakage with reports of damage to the structure protecting the reactor. And now we can go live to Japan and our correspondent Ivor Bennett is there for us. Hello there, Ivor. So radiation levels have risen both inside and outside the plant. How bad is the situation and what's the risk of nuclear disaster now and what's being done to try and prevent it? The situation now is very critical indeed. There's a very realistic threat of a, a nuclear meltdown now. That's according to the Prime Minister Naoto Khan. He's just come out and addressed the nation, warning people to stay indoors if they haven't been evacuated already. This follows two explosions this morning. The last one, just the last the previously intact reactors. Uh, the second one, actually, uh, one reactor that wasn't even turned on. It was had been shut down at the time of the earthquake. And we now could be on the verge of a major nuclear catastrophe. We know radiation has leaked uh, to... As there have been serious radiation leaks uh, at both reactors. The radiation levels are 400 maximum uh, level that's normally absorbed in one year. Previously, after the first explosion this morning, those levels were eight times. So just in the last few moments, they've shot up. And it, it is a very critical situation indeed. And this is the first time, actually, that the Tokyo Electric Power Company and the Prime Minister have come out to say that we could be on the verge of a catastrophe here. And there is a major, uh, very realistic possibility of meltdown. So this is very significant indeed. And uh, the situation is critical. Right, but what's the mood where you are at the moment? How worried are people there? Well, this news of the second explosion hasn't filtered through uh, really on the streets, but a number of journalist crews with uh, Wiz and speaking to, they just want to head out, to, they're heading for the exit straight away. People don't want to stick around and on the streets. People uh, are lining up outside uh, what few food stores are still selling um, produce. They still have anything left. Most have empty shelves. Uh, they want to stock up in case they have to go to ground to spend time indoors because their fear of food shortages. People just want to uh, get out and get out of the atmosphere or just uh, head for the exits. And people are heading to Tokyo as well to try and fly out uh, of the country. They fear that this could be a really major disaster that is pending here. Right. Aside from the risk of nuclear disaster, how's the rescue and recovery effort proceeding following Friday's earthquake and tsunami there? Well, they've got a major task on their hands. First the earthquake, then the tsunami, and now uh, a potential nuclear meltdown. And uh, what a task it is. They've, until now, the last four days, they've been sifting through the debris. It's, they've got anything, everything in the, as be, that the tsunami left was complete destruction. They've had to sift through trees, boats, cars, buildings to try and find survivors. They have found 15,000 survivors along the, the destroyed coastline uh, along the Pacific uh, in the last four days but they still know there's 30,000 people that they can't reach simply because the way is uh, inaccessible. And it's a race against time because there's, on top of the nuclear meltdown, they, they fear that another aftershock magnitude 7 could hit in the next few days, which again could lead to another tsunami. And if that happens, well, uh, it's pretty much... Uh, impossible to to reach any survivors uh, after that and uh, they uh, they know that the death count the death count at the moment is already 2400 and that's risen quite rapidly in the last day or so it's already been four days uh, for the people who are still missing 10,000 in one town Minamisamriku and it's not uh, looking likely uh, if the search goes on still uh, that these people could survive even uh, in terms of those who have been left homeless uh, that have survived this catastrophe, uh, half a million still have spent their fourth night now without any uh, shelter, heating or electricity. Uh, so the situation is very grave indeed for them. And uh, food shortages uh, are being helped by a number of food companies and uh, all across the country, in fact, shipping in food aid uh, to these stricken areas. To, and in the shelters, they're being provided with handouts. They're trying to make it three times a day, trying to give them what they can as uh, produce flies in from across the country.
Uh, but it looks like the situation now has just got a whole lot more serious because of these latest two explosions. And it looks like uh, we might not be hanging around much longer, actually, because with these radiation levels rising, it, the situation is very critical indeed.